Good evening, all, and welcome. Things are about to get spooky in tonight's episode, so I hope you're ready, because it's time to get comfortable, buckle in, and let the darkness take control. This story is my cousin's. She has shared these experiences with me since we were teenagers, and the fact that they take place in her parents' house, the house that she grew up. Apparently, before my aunt and uncle bought the home, it was owned by a family who were in a religious cult of some kind. They had to renovate the place just to make it habitable. And the home is on the south shore of Long Island, New York. My cousin had to share an upstairs bedroom with her little sister while they were growing up. She used to wake up suddenly in the middle of the night and see a dark figure standing between her bed and her sister's. She described this thing as apparently to be dressed in a black hooded cloak and having a bone white face with empty black sockets where the eyes should be. The nose was inhumanly long and pointed, giving it the look of one of those doctor masks that they wore during the Black Plague, if you know what I'm talking about. The mouth was also a gaping black hole. She could see hands sticking out of the sleeves of its clock, and they were white and skeletal. Her impressions of this was that it was the Grim Reaper except it didn't carry a scythe. It would just appear, lit up by the nearby windows, and stare at her for a few seconds, and then get up if she looked away and back, and it would be gone. Of course, when she was little, she would get up and run and scream into her parents' room. She swears she wasn't just having nightmares, because it was always the same, and she always got up and ran out the room as soon as she realized what she was looking at. Her sister somehow never woke up to this and never saw the entity. She says she saw the thing about a dozen times while growing up in the house, and it never moved or tried to approach her, except for one time when it raised its bony hand and pointed right at her. Eventually, she left home, went to college, and then wound up living and working in Queens. Her older brother, a police officer at one point, moved back home with their parents for a short while. He confided to her that one night, he was alone in the house and staying in an upstairs bedroom, when he heard a loud commotion coming from the parents' bedroom downstairs. It sounded like drawers being opened and slammed and shut repeatedly and violently. Being a cop, his first thought was an intruder was looking to rob the house. He pulled his pistol and headed downstairs to investigate. A sweep of his parents' bedroom, the living room kitchen and patio turned up empty. But still nervous and not convinced that he hadn't just interrupted a robbery, he went back upstairs only seconds later did the banging and slamming start up again. Seriously freaked out now, it took him several minutes to venture back downstairs. But once more, there was no evidence of a human intruder found. The drawers were open, but nothing was disturbed and out of place. The final event took place earlier this year. My cousin, who is now in her thirties, had moved back into her parents' house with her husband and two children, after living abroad for ten years. Late one night, her young daughter woke up the house screaming bloody murder, when her father rushed into the room to see what was wrong. The little girl said she had seen a long white shape gliding across her room. She was staying in the same room as my cousin the one that she had slept in when she was a little girl. Shortly after putting their daughter back to bed, telling her it was only a dream, 
My cousin and her husband heard their son begin to shriek from the downstairs spare bedroom. Being a two-year-old kid, he couldn't articulate his fear. He just continued to scream inconsolably for hours and wouldn't settle down until allowed to sleep with his parents. Neither child had ever had an episode like this before. My cousin and her family are still staying in that house and still sometimes hear weird thumps and bangs around the place at night. No one ever hears the mysterious noise except for at night and only when they're alone. The other story happened to my brother while he was on active duty in the army and stationed in Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. He was an enlisted military police officer and happened to be on base patrol one night with his partner when their sergeant radioed them and told them they needed to come over to a condemned housing area. Their assignment this night was to drive through the base housing and make sure that no shady activities were taking place. Now, unfortunately, even on military bases, one has to deal with drug addicts roaming around and sometimes people tend to squat in old abandoned housing areas. This particular neighborhood was full of condemned houses with no electricity, due to be torn down soon. The sergeant said that someone had called to report seeing people in one of the houses, and they would probably need to go in and remove some addicts. That's what they were expecting anyway. My brother and his partner went into the house while their patrol sergeant stayed outside to cover the perimeter in case anyone tried to sneak out the building. First, they did a sweep of the ground floor to include the kitchen, dining room, bathroom, living room, and a pantry. Nothing to be found. But as they were combing each area with flashlights, they heard muffled footsteps coming from the second story. Aha, my brother thought. There's only one staircase, so they can't get out unless they jump out the window. His partner covered the stairs while he swept the second story, which was a long hallway lined with bedrooms and one bathroom. None of the rooms turned up any signs of a person, but they were sure they'd heard footsteps. So this time they both headed upstairs. They not only searched each room, but opened every closet and the bathroom too. Still nothing. Figuring they'd been hearing things, they both headed downstairs to give the house's ground floor one last do-over before heading outside. Meanwhile, their patrol sergeant is walking around outside and can see their flashlights moving through the house. He can also see all the windows. My brother and his fellow soldiers go out to report that they haven't found anything, and perhaps whoever made the call was mistaken. The sergeant is agitated and informs them that as they were covering the ground floor, he saw two human shadows pass by an upstairs window. They must have missed the intruders who were probably still in there. My brother and his battle buddy insist they covered both floors and found no one. But the sergeant isn't convinced and sends them back in to investigate. So the first place they head to now is upstairs. They're searching the first bedroom when they heard footsteps pounding down the hallway and a door slammed shut at the far end of the hall. They run out of the room and shine their flashlights but see no one. They check every window and every crevice. No one. They think there might be a draft, but it's all closed tight. So they continue checking every room and closet until they get the bright idea to open the attic door. That is one of the bedrooms. That one down at the end of the hallway where the door was slammed shut. My brother's partner has to stand on his shoulders to pull the attic door open because it is in the ceiling. He pulls it open, shines his light around, and there's nothing. For good measure, he pulls out his pepper spray and just crops dust before going back down. Nothing that breathes oxygen could have sucked in all that spray and not made tons of noise. And there's still nothing. At that moment, they both heard a door slam shut on the other end of the hallway.
They run down and open the room, but it's empty, and so is the closet. Rather than run up and down the hall at night, not exactly sure what to think, they decide to head back downstairs for good measure. They do one more sweep of the ground floor before heading outside to tell the sergeant no luck. And did he see anyone exiting the house? He replied no. He'd been doing laps around the perimeter and no one had left the property. What's more, he demanded to know how they hadn't been able to catch anyone since he'd been watching them outside the front door. Two shadows had gone, running by the second story windows. My brother called me at 3 a.m. just to tell me this right after it happened. Voice trembling. I believe that he's sincere. He has never given any thought to being paranoid before, but he's been a believer since then. My family swears up and down that this didn't happen. But I swear to God, I know what I saw. My house is one story, and we only have two bathrooms. One down the hall, and the other in my parents' room. I hate my parents' room in general. It just gives me a bad feeling overall, and I had my first case of sleep paralysis in that room. For whatever reason, my bathroom shower was broken. So I went into my parents' room to shower. I told them both I was there, so my dad wouldn't have to worry about accidentally walking in on me. And my mother helped run the shower for me. She kissed me goodbye, and I began to undress. After I had my shirt off, bare chest, and all out, I tried to get a Bluetooth speaker to sync with my phone, but it just wasn't having it. In the middle of my struggle, the doorknob started shaking. It was locked, so the only way to move it was from left to right, and it just kept on shaking loudly. I turned around and screamed, Yeah? and got no reply. I said it again, but there was still nothing. The doorknob just kept on shaking. Eventually it stopped and went quiet again, and I just ended up taking my shower. But the entire time, I couldn't take my eyes off the door. Now, as an artist slash writer, I couldn't help but to imagine scary scenarios that really would just make me pass out. I figured someone cracking open the door but just enough to look at me before closing it again unannounced. Eventually I was really freaked out, and I cut the shower short. After quickly putting on a towel, I stood in front of the door and thought to myself, I remember leaving the lights on in my parents' room, so if they're off, I'm going to die. Lo and behold, the lights in my parents' room were off, and the switch was next to the door. So I just took a deep breath and booked it across the dark room in nothing but a towel. After I put on a bathrobe, I confronted my mother and asked if she'd turned off the lights. My mum regularly forgets to leave the lights on for anyone else in a room, so it made sense that she did that after my shower. She turned the lights off on her way out, I'd imagine. But when I asked her about the doorknob, she told me instantly to stop lying. Now I'm standing there like, you're kidding me, right? Did you shake the doorknob or what? My mom says no, and that no one did. My dad had been asleep on the couch the entire time, and she hadn't seen my brother come in. Now I'm thinking, okay, it's my little brother, the absolute prick. I like to shake the bathroom doorknob once or twice when he's inside to scare him, so he must have pranked me too. Nope. He was inside his room mid-game tournament with his door locked. After his game, I asked him and he told me it wasn't. He was inside gaming. Even raging. So he definitely wasn't in the mood to mess with me. He really didn't. And he's kind of scared of the dark as well. 
so I doubt he would have walked into the dark room just to shake the doorknob for two minutes. My family agree. I imagined it. And even though I have an active imagination, I never actually see anything. My mum in her life has had ghost stories about shaking doorknobs that have no explanation. I'm certain it wasn't my family. And something like the wind couldn't have done it either. Not when all the windows are closed, mind you. Not even a pet was in the room. So what could it have been? My doorknob was moving on and off all night. I opened the door halfway to make sure it wasn't my brother playing a prank. I saw the doorknob moving on both sides of the door on its own all night. I always had a feeling that something did not like me in that house. I was 13 and living at my mum's. That is for me specifically. My mum has had strange experiences at that house that she has either brushed off or attributed to her imagination. She was looking at a picture of her deceased grandpa and said she loved him and the light switch flipped on. My little brother also witnessed this. My spouse seems to attract ghosts. When we first met, the light switch in the room turned on and off on its own about three times. He acted like it was normal and told me not to worry about it. Later, he told me about the thing that follows him around and how it pushed him down the stairs once after he and his friends had taunted it. When he was with his ex, he went to a party that had a psychic lady and she said that something bad was following him around. He has a lot more weird stories about the thing and it did make its present known. I actually did not get a bad feeling from whatever it was, but odd things would definitely happen, especially when we talked about it. One night we were talking about it and I thought maybe it was all in our heads. And before we could go back down the stairs to the basement, the motion detector and hand soap went off seven times in a row by itself. We were on the other sides of the room, which had never randomly gone off before or acted up in strange ways. Another night, I got the courage to ask it to leave nicely, but I didn't get the feeling it was inherently evil. It hasn't bothered him since, but I think it still hangs around at his mum's house since we moved out. The last time I visited his mum's house was when I was followed by his shadow and I went down to the basement, which surprised me because she did not believe in the paranormal. My spouse also has weird predictions slash prophetic dreams. He dreamed of me two years before we even met while he was still with his ex-girlfriend. He said he told his ex that he was in a truck although he didn't have a truck at the time, with a girl, me. That wasn't her, and there were weird distinct bumps and lights on the road, which are specific to my area. I didn't believe him until I met her three years later, and she corroborated the story. She was really worried about it before they broke up. He had a dream of us having a baby, but sometimes I'm afraid he's gonna dream of a different girl, and we'll break up just like what happened with his ex. I think we will have a happy ending though. It's been five years since we were together and we're getting married in July. This happened to me in 2012. I was traveling with a friend from El Paso, Texas to Ridoso, New Mexico. It's a trip that takes a little less than three hours. It was dark, and it was also a very lonely road. After two hours on the road, we passed through this abandoned town with an old Wild West style tavern in the middle, and we thought it was pretty creepy. 
but I told my friend we should turn around and go enter the abandoned tavern. We did that, and when we were turning around, there was a sign that told the name of the town was Oro Grande. We stopped in a place, and we stepped out the car. There were no lights at all, and when we had walked a couple of meters beyond our car, we heard five to ten dogs barking at us from nowhere. We noped out of there immediately, got in the car and went to Ruidoso, and arrived 20 to 30 minutes after that incident. Three days after, on our way back from the trip, it wasn't night time yet. So I told him that we should step onto the tavern and ask for a beer, because we had chickened out last time. And we started going back, and there was no sign from the town. We stopped at a gas station and asked where the hell that town was, and they told us it was about 30 minutes from El Paso, and it was obvious we didn't stop and just continued our ride. We didn't understand anything at all, because on our first ride, Oro Grande, the town, was 30 minutes away from Ruidoso, and on our way back, the town was about 30 minutes away from El Paso. To this day, I don't understand what the hell happened to me and my friends, and we haven't talked about it much since. This happened about 37 years ago, so some of the events that happened are now long forgotten. But the main events are burned deeply into my memory, and shall be until the day I die. I know many of you will find my story hard to believe, but it did happen, and scared the crap out of me. It happened to me and my then at the time boyfriend, who later became my husband and now ex-husband, Alec. If what I'm about to tell you would have just happened to me, I may have just thought it was my imagination running rampant, but we both experienced it. On this particular evening, Alec came over to pick me up from my parents' home for a date. We decided to eat at one of our favorite burger joints. We went through the drive through and we opted to eat in the car so that we could have each other to ourselves and be able to chat without interference from others. Everything was going fine, normal. Then after we ate, we decided to go parking, for we were 17 and that's what teenagers want to do. We went to a road that we had gone to before to make out. The road was perfect for making out, as there was a field and a farm on one side, and you could see houses from there, and they were set far apart from each other. We take off from the restaurant and head for the road. This is where things start to get weird. All of a sudden I got the feeling of being watched. You know the feeling. It felt like someone was watching us from the back seat, and I was scared and freaked out. I just knew that there was no one in the back. The only time Alec and I had ever been out the car was when he came to get me from my parents' house. I desperately tried to ignore the feeling, but I had to look, and summoned up all the courage and did, already knowing no way could anyone be there. And yep, no one. Yet the feelings didn't go away, and throughout our drive, I had to periodically check the back seat, only to find it as you guessed it, empty. Just as empty as the time before, and the time before that. We finally arrive at the road, as we called it. We came through the back. We knew the name of it then, but it has since erased from my memory. We start making out, and I'm still feeling uncomfortable, with the fear and feeling of being watched persisting. Here I have to say that neither I nor my boyfriend were on drugs or under the influence of alcohol. But not too long into our makeout session, things got even stranger. I started to feel different, act different, and I wasn't like I was myself. Well, at least not fully. It was like someone or something was trying to take over my body, and only had just so much of hold. 
It felt like I was becoming a passenger in my own body, and the feeling of being watched had left. Even Alec was acting differently. It was very hard to explain. The way we touched, kissed, and the things we said and so forth were completely different. Our sessions didn't last long when we pulled back from each other, and both said the same thing: that we need to get off the road. Both of us had an uneasy feeling. A feeling that something bad was imminent. We knew that we weren't acting ourselves. I mean, after being around someone for a year or so, you know how each other acts when making out, and we both definitely weren't acting right. Yet we had no control over it, so we straightened our clothes and booked it off the road. I still to this day don't understand what exactly happened to us or why, but whatever you were. I'd rather not encounter you again. This next story commences on April of eighty-seven. Alec and I had been married for around two and a half years now, and had just recently moved. We were in our twenties, and very excited to be moving into our home. We'd also purchased our first puppy, a beautiful Australian Shepherd mix, who we affectionately nicknamed Specs. Our life consisted of work. Each other, making a home, and our fur baby, Specs. I need to mention the home we moved into had been Alex's grandparents. His father had died in the home back in the seventies from a heart attack, in what later became our boys' room. I never got to meet his grandfather. I met his grandmother when Alec and I started dating, and I adored her, but her declining health. Meant that she was placed in a nursing home by Alex's mother. She didn't last long after going there, and died at the same time this story begins in April of '87 in the nursing home. Some background on Grandma: She was born in Poland, and came over to the U.S. as a young girl. Met and fell in love with his grandfather. Grandma was the type of woman who had to make sure you were fed and watered. Even though if you had just eaten, there was still something of it. Saying you could just eat until it wasn't good enough, she'd still find something for you to do, or eat, even if it were candy. She wanted you to eat. I should mention this, as it pertains to the story. Alec and I both had to work. We left at the same time, which was very early in the morning. Alec was working for a factory, a ways from our home. I was opening crew leader at a restaurant, so with each leaving early, no food was cooked, and we just got ready, fed the dog, and went out the door. Me one way, he another. After work, I headed home. When I got there, I could hear Specs whining for me in a hurry, and opened the door so that she could greet me. But she wasn't the only thing that greeted me. I'd now like to say I totally saw a ghost, but sadly, I still don't know if one was there. For what greeted me was the smell of pancakes, and as I mentioned, neither of us had cooked. I just knew it was Grandma saying hello, in a way that I would forget when Alex got home, and told him what had happened, and he wholeheartedly agreed that it was my grandma. Years flew by, as life does, with work, the birth of our sons, another dog, a cat, rabbit, birds, and multiple fish later. One day, Alex and I were talking, and he tells me he smelled his grandmother's powder. I smell it too, but there's not a ghost in sight. Then one night, something strange happens. You must understand that our cat and dog do tolerate each other, but on this night, the other was left out all night. They were both up on our bed, sitting real pretty, both of them, almost side by side. I was sitting on the bed with my back against the headboard, doing something, not sure what, but I finally noticed the cat and the dog were doing strange enough things by sitting near each other, but both stared at the same corner of the room. I look, thinking they'd spotted a bug, but I didn't see anything, and go back to whatever. I look again, figuring I must have missed the bug the first time, but there's still no bug, 
and then it hits me what's going on. They must have seen a ghost. I can't tell you how long they sat there and stared at the corner, neither one moving an inch, but it was quite a while. That's also about the time another thing started. I think I'm the only one this happened to. I know you'll think I'm crazy as well. I started hearing disembodied voices, but you could hear them faintly. And I could never make out what they were saying anyway. This only happened at night. I heard those voices until I moved out of that house and Alec and I got a divorce since I never heard them again. It was the house. And even the boys said that there was a ghost in the kitchen. I was once driving in Indiana between Lake Station and Valparaiso. I think it must have been about 5.15 in the morning. There were a few deer about to cross the road, so I slowed down and stopped in order to let them cross. One of them looked right at me, tilted its head like it was considering something, then stood on its back legs and walked across the road. The rest of the deer followed suit, standing on their hind legs and strutting across the worn asphalt. I was training with my foreman that week, and he just looked at me and asked if I'd seen it too. I didn't answer. I just floored it. Another time I was swimming in Lake Michigan, and I felt something profoundly old. The lake was carved into the earth by utterly enormous glaciers, ancient and implacable. And there was something equally old, equally unyielding about that lake. It regarded me. And I felt nothing but contempt and dismal from it. I swam back to shore, opened my flask and lay on the warm sand. I must have dozed off, because next thing I knew I was at the water's edge, dressed in a crisp blue suit. I smelled ash and ozone, and even though I didn't look behind me, I knew Chicago was burning. I walked into Lake Michigan, and I woke up just as my head went underwater. I had been dreaming. I washed my face, took the train home, and tried to forget about it. The most recent one is malicious. When I lived with my parents, I woke up one night and felt someone staring at me. I looked around and saw him, an impossibly tall man with skin as dark as coal, wearing a top hat and staring at me. I felt something shaking and saw my German shepherd lying next to me shaking and growling at him. He glanced at her, looked directly at me, and smiled a horrifyingly wide smile of crooked chipped teeth. He reached out, grabbed a small box I'd left on the desk, said something in a language I didn't recognize and vanished. Immediately my dog started whining and licking my face. I couldn't go back to sleep, but I just thought it was a nightmare. I took Lola on a very long walk until my legs felt like lead and passed out. When I woke up a few hours later, I noticed something. The box was not on my desk. It was not in my room. It was gone, and I haven't seen it since. I can't be certain that the last two really happened. I do have depression and I'll occasionally have bouts of paranoia and terror. I still don't know what happened to that box, and I really don't care enough to find out. I just know that the world is a much bigger and older place than most people care to acknowledge, and in no way have we conquered it. At most, we have survived it. One day when I was 18 or so, I started to walk up the steps to my bedroom. At the top of the stairs, there was a ledge that my dad's ex had a statue of two fairies fishing. On my way up the stairs, it came flying at my head. I moved out of the way and was like, 
Whoa, what the hell? So I walked back down the steps, picked up the fairies, and put them both back where they belonged. I went to tell my dad about it, and went into his bedroom. As I started my story, his laundry basket moved from his side of the bedroom over to the side of the room I was on. I was like, well, good night, dad, and hid under the covers the rest of the night. My dad doesn't believe in ghosts, but even he cannot explain that one. Another time, I was in my bedroom with my ex, and we were getting ready for bed. My dog was asleep on the bed already, until he all of a sudden started low growling and showing his teeth at my closet. His head was low, his ears were flat, and he growled and followed nothing from the closet, all the way around my bed towards the bedroom door. He then followed it from the back door to the closet, hackles up, growling getting heavier. When it got back to the closet, he jumped off the bed and went to the other side of the room. My dog was shaken up, my ex was shaken up, and I was shaken up. To lighten the mood, I said, I'm not afraid of no ghosts, and closed my door. Before I could even turn around, the closet door which I had just closed busted open, and I jumped back onto the bed. My closet door is an accordion-style door, and it's been broken since we moved in. You have to lift it off the tracks at the bottom, and then pull it. I checked to make sure my cat wasn't in there, and maybe freaked when I closed the door. But my bedroom door was closed, so unless he could suddenly shift through the doors, he wasn't in my room. We all slept under the covers that night, when my dad's girlfriend passed away, he made a DVD of a bunch of pictures with her family and her friends in them. He had it in the DVD player, but when we were watching TV, the DVD player wasn't on, and the input for the cable box wasn't either. While watching, the power in the house goes out for a split second, and the TV boots back. I thought it was weird because we lose power frequently, and then TV never turns itself back on. I write it off. Then, all of a sudden, the DVD player is on, playing her slideshow. When we watched it with my dad, it had a menu screen you had to interact with to get it to start. But this time it just booted up. I took the disc out, put it away, and unplugged the DVD player. When I was in first grade, my parents bought a piece of land for dirt cheap. It was in an area of town which was known to be cursed land. A lot of people warned my mum not to buy it, but she couldn't resist the price. They started trying to build a wall along the perimeter by the river that ran alongside it, and each day they would start work again, somehow they'd find the wall torn down, and no one knew why. So one day, my mum dragged me to the construction site after school, and I guess I was throwing a tantrum. One of the workers told me to shut up, because the spirits will fixate on me if I made a fuss. Apparently, they saw a ball of light roaming around the property, which was said to be a bad spirit. That night, I started throwing up blood. A bucket. I remember holding a bucket. I felt nauseous and confused, but didn't feel like I was sick. My parents rushed me to the ER, and all the nurses and doctors were very confused, because the type of blood that I was throwing up wasn't my blood type. Desperate, my mum called a witch doctor, she looked insane, and I remember her well. She looked like she had stepped out of a cheesy, scary movie. White long hair, wrinkly skin, and looked to be at least a hundred. She started smudging me with what was probably sage, and was chanting, and the whole thing went on for about an hour. 
Then suddenly I stopped throwing up, and she started throwing up the blood, almost like she took whatever was happening to me away and putting it into her. I forgot exactly how she got rid of whatever malevolent force that was. I just remember her telling my parents that I had one foot in the spirit world and one in the human. That's why I was so vulnerable to attack, and I'll never forget that. That memory remains with me today. I cannot shake it off. Until now, that piece of land remains empty, and I'm glad my parents were able to sell it. We lived in a brand new house for several years that had unexplained activity. The beds would move as if someone sat on it, or maybe an animal jumped out of the radio that was plugged in and turned it on. Lots of little things that bother me the most. Then the shower was running. You could hear voices, like multiple voices talking and laughing. It creeped us way the heck out. When I would go to the bathroom during the night, I could not look at the mirror, as it was huge, ceiling to the counter wall to wall, and I would actually put my hand up to block the vision on my left. During the day, I would go out and think that I'm an idiot and that I'm fine. Then night would come, and I was afraid to go into these properties, since the house was new or just an entity who randomly chooses that house, or can it be debunked? In the past few months, I have started seeing this bright flash which barely lasts a second. I always see it in the same spot from behind the wardrobe. Last night it was about 1.12am and I heard some music. I usually stay up late. Then I was listening to this song and all of a sudden there was this bright flash. I was scared of this thing, and somehow, I managed to pluck up the courage to say hello out loud. It flashed once again, and I was so scared that the hairs on the back of my head were feeling tingly. And what's more strange, is that I was hearing Fix by Coldplay before this first flash, and the song barely started when the first flash came and only 30 seconds have passed after that, which I came back to my senses, but that was strange. It was weird that it happened with the song. After the flash again happened at 1.17am, I'm pretty sure about what I saw and experienced. I'm an 18 year old, and my visions are normal and my eyes are good. I'm not highly religious, but this does freak me out. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope everyone is doing well. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment with your thoughts, as that always helps me out a bunch. Something else that you can do is subscribe if you're new here, and press the little bell icon for good measure, as it will notify you every time I post every night. If there's a story that you wish to share and have it featured on the channel, feel free to send it to my Reddit, or email it to me either are fine. I should get it, and we can get the show on the road. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.